everybody. This is Alex with BF Vintage. We are here at the Goodwill on 19th Ave and Union Hills, and we're gonna go inside and see if we can find any treasures for our Etsy shop, BF Treasures Co. So I've had really good luck at uh, this store in the past, and I'm hoping to use some of that luck today. So let's see what we can find. All right, so the first thing I noticed when I walked in was that they still had some Christmas items, uh, and it was exciting because they were on sale. And who doesn't love a good sale? I was just scanning around. Then this little house caught my eye, but I couldn't tell if it was vintage or not. It did say made in China. Sometimes that can mean it's still vintage, but um, I usually look for other types of stamps. Uh, that little snowman was cute, but he had a little chip on his nose. I really liked this guy in the back. There was just something unique about him, but I was kind of struggling to get him out. And I liked the little deer that was next to him. So I looked at the bottom and I noticed that it was signed Father Christmas Alice. So I don't know if it was like a hobbyist piece that someone painted themselves or I actually have no idea, but it wasn't for me anymore at that point, as sweet as it was. Just scanning around, there was still quite a lot of holiday stuff. I was surprised. And these ornaments caught my eye at first, but they just really weren't the vibe I was going for. Just not something I was interested in. Baby's first ornament, I think is what it was called. And then I thought, oh, is this a, like a brass trivet? This would be super cute. I love the snowflakes. But I actually, it looked really silver. Um, but not quite silver. I just couldn't figure out what it was made out of. If it was silver plated or brass, I, I couldn't tell. But I didn't like the condition that it was in. So I moved on. And then I saw this swan and I thought, oh, is this a lamp? It's so cute. And I realized that no, this thing was what had the cord and this duck uh, or swan um, had a candle in it already. <laughs> Checking every shelf I can, looking for treasures. <laughs> then I noticed this sad nutcracker and I thought, oh, does he feel purposeless in life because he can't crack nuts anymore? Poor little guy. <laughs> then I saw this vase, which looked like crystal and just had this kind of design that reminds me of a lot of vintage vases, but I wanted to get a better look at it just because there was a lot going on with all this tinsel. And when I looked at it closer, I realized that there was like a lot of caked on, I don't even, I'm not even quite sure, like uh, water staining uh, or like calcium buildup from water. So I just thought I don't need that kind of project right now, even though it is pretty. started looking at some mugs and I did think this mug was pretty cute. Um, it did read 1989 Vitalik Incorporated and I thought it was very sweet but I don't know it just wasn't quite quite compelling enough for me to pick up and then I saw this thing in the back here. I was trying to figure out what it was. Not sure if it was a ceramic figurine but I looked at the bottom and it did look like it was modern, so I put it back. Saw a box, always have to check the box just to make sure nothing special is hiding in there. <laughs> and I always look through the bags as well as I can uh, because I've actually had really good luck with bags. Sometimes I find brass items, ceramic items, figurines, all kinds of stuff. So I saw this cute little horse and I wanted to get a better look to see what else is in there because it did look like it, his nose might be damaged. 
and but it did make me curious about what else was in there but I was trying to find a spot to uh, investigate further and then I just noticed that these other items they look like a little house another house that kind of matched that first house we saw and um, they just they looked like they were likely modern to me that I, I don't know for sure but um, decided to move on didn't really have much luck with Christmas stuff unfortunately just checking out the wreaths so this made me a little bit sad because as you can see the lid is broken so definitely rest in peace little little whatever you were <laughs> and then i i saw this vase here it had like a frosted bottom um, but it was very light when i picked it up so i lost interest and there was a lot of milk glass it made me realize that i don't really know as much about milk glass just because i don't think that a lot of milk glass holds as much value i think you have to really know what you're doing and I don't yet so with milk glass anyway so I'll leave that to you experts out there I know some of them can even glow they have the uranium in them and I definitely need to pick up a a um, black light to carry with me so that I can confirm but that doesn't always mean that it's still worth uh, a lot of money so and then I saw this and uh, you might not know this, but I am a Doctor Who fan, and so I saw this TARDIS. It looked like someone had painted it, and uh, I just wanted to check it out because I thought it was cool. <laughs> then I saw this little picture, but it didn't have a mark on the bottom, and it did look like some of the the flower petals were had broken off and that happens a lot with these kinds of pieces unfortunately so looking back here and <clears throat> excuse me really liked this this picture unfortunately I couldn't really pull this tag off it looked like someone else had tried to do the same thing and I just wasn't comfortable with pulling it, trying to pull it off any further than it already was. So if any of you know what this is, uh, leave a comment. Let me know um, who makes it. And yeah, because I was not successful. <laughs> wasn't brave enough to do it, I guess. Thought these strawberries were really sweet but uh it didn't weigh very much and that concerned me a little bit i always love these little um like baby ceramic baby planters but i don't know enough about the shoes to really know uh if it's vintage or not and i just i just didn't think it was so so even though it was cute, I decided to leave it um, because I didn't see a maker's mark of any kind, didn't see a made in Japan. I think Napco is another one that makes those. These were pretty cool. They, they looked very gothic and renaissance-y to me. It did say Brighton on the bottom, which I wasn't familiar with either. And I don't really do a lot of glassware, but I did at least want to check them out because they looked cool. <laughs> Saw some plates. This dish looked cool. It didn't have a mark though, and some of the gold was coming off at the top. So I just felt like um, it wasn't quite in the kind of condition I would maybe take a chance on it normally. Had to check this out, thought it might be some art glass, and it was, but it wasn't as heavy as I'd hoped. And the bottom, as you can see, is 
not clear and smooth. So I thought, you know what? I'll leave this for someone else. They can check it out. It did have some pretty yellow in it though. There was a lot of clear glass <laughs> in this aisle. And then I saw this and I thought, why does this look familiar to me? I don't know what what was going on in my mind, but anyways, it said Crackle Barrel. <laughs> so I was like, well, maybe I saw one of these a long time ago when I went there. It's been years since I've been there. So, <laughs> but I don't know, something about it. Then I saw this, it looked like Bohemian Crystal. And I have sold uh, a piece similar to this in the past. Unfortunately, at the top, it looked like there were some chips. And um, so for that reason, I had to leave that guy behind. We're having a rough start today, but I'm determined. We'll find something. This was so heavy. You could tell it was crystal, um, but they definitely looked more modern. And I didn't, I didn't feel like it would be a good choice for me as far as shipping costs. This was really pretty as well, and, and it does also appear to be modern. At first I wasn't sure if it was modern or not. It looked modern. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure these things out, but... I don't know, it just was so shiny that it had more of a uh, brand new kind of look to me. And then I found another one towards the bottom. But first I saw this and I thought, oh, well, here's another decanter. Maybe, maybe it's not quite as modern. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to put these next to each other because someone might really want them and maybe they didn't wouldn't notice that there were two and so i decided to leave these here for them <laughs> they were in great condition wasn't sure what these were and then i realized they were like earmuffs kitty earmuffs. Then I found this brass piece. Uh, you don't know this about me yet, but I absolutely love brass. If I could decorate my entire house in brass, I would. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I felt like this one was not as unique and the condition was okay. And so for that reason, I left it behind. We'll just keep on hunting, keep on keeping on. So I saw this cute cat. My daughter and I really love cats and um, it looked like actually it had had multiple candles burned into it. So I didn't really want the project of taking that out. <laughs> I really liked these candlesticks. They did say Pottery Barn which to me uh, indicates they're modern. These were really pretty too. They looked like they were hand painted. They were probably for a lamp of some kind, but I didn't see the, the bottoms of it anywhere. So was just left to admire the tops. <laughs> like the color on this but it didn't have any markings of any kind now we're in like the candle area I like this because it had like the um, hobnail type of um, bumps on it but it was definitely modern because of the sticker on the bottom but I'm a sucker for some hobnails. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And this caught my eye just because of the rose and the opalescent type of color that it had, but there were no markings and I just wasn't sure. Moving along, I found like the mecca of, <laughs> of little teacups and saucers. I'm not really into those. I, th I mean, I think they're absolutely gorgeous, but I just don't personally feel drawn to them or to um, selling them in my Etsy shop. So I admire them, but leave them behind. I was curious about these bowls because they had a unique shape to them, but they didn't have markings. And these were cute, but they didn't have any lids. And they also didn't have any markings. So <laughs> they definitely had those retro flowers that I love. They give me like those 60s, 70s vibes. I thought this teapot was kind of a unique shape. And I did also like the color on that. And then <clears throat> we see these guys. And while I was looking at it, talking to myself, saying, I wonder if this is vintage. It looks like it'd probably be from the 50s or the 60s. And one of them had some chips on it, but this one didn't. And while I was doing that, there was this sweet, sweet lady who came up to me and said, 60 years ago, I or um, bought that for as a wedding gift for one of my friends and I thought oh that's so sweet and then I I asked her if she remembered if it came with any cups or anything and she couldn't remember because she said it was a long time ago but anyways it gave me confirmation that it was in fact um, vin a vintage piece and it was from that specific era and the bottom of it actually ended up saying Japan. So I had a lot more confidence walking away with it, but I, I ended up only getting the one because the other one definitely had a lot more chips and cracks and this one was in much better condition. That was cool to have someone confirm that we knew that that was a, a vintage piece. So she got it for someone for their wedding. That's really cute. So we put it in our cart. Our first piece. I was drawn to these red flowers. They were really vibrant, but it was definitely modern. It said made in China. That's usually an indicator. But I was feeling good that we found something. And then I spotted this. And I just, the colors were so vibrant. It's got that bright yellow, the pink, the blues, the orange, the green, and it had this crazing on it. If you see all those little cracks, um, they, they look like cracks, but they're not really cracks. But that's an indication that typically that something has aged. And I felt like the colors were very retro. And so looked, it, it appeared to me to be a sugar bowl of some kind, although there wasn't a spoon in it. But I just thought it was darling. And so it went in my cart. And I hope I can find uh, someone to love it. <laughs> Started getting drawn to bright colors after that. <laughs> Usually I don't do a sugar bowl by itself. I like to do a set like a creamer and a sugar bowl, but um, that one was just so unique, I decided to take a chance. But most of the time I don't do that. I saw this other teapot and just wanted to get a better look at it. I guess I was on a teapot kick after that. <laughs> looking at the baskets, seeing if any of them looked unique. This one I liked that it had different colors in it, so I was trying to investigate to see if it, the quality was there, if it looked handmade, and I didn't really think it was. I thought it was likely manufactured somewhere. Then I was set 
some of the salt and pepper shaker section and my goodness they had so many of this flamingo and this the parrot what is it a toucan just like I don't even know how many it was crazy and then we found some more Christmas stuff and I thought well maybe I'll get a little more lucky over here and I saw these glasses back here and they had this design that kind of reminded me of maybe like some vintage 80s glassware uh, and even though I thought they were cute, I just don't typically do a lot of glassware. Just not something that, I don't know, it's just not something I'm super drawn to. It doesn't excite me as much. Looking through the mugs here, seeing if maybe we can find another cute mug or maybe one to match that, that other mug we found earlier. But I didn't. And I still look in these some of these bins where it looks like, you know, bathroom cosmetic type stuff. Because every once in a while somebody's stashed something there like this. Which is like, what is this doing in the bath section? But I couldn't tell what kind of glass it was. But I could tell that the bottom was clear and smooth. And it was very heavy. So I felt like it was really good quality. And I was just trying to figure out if I thought maybe it was... Italian like Mur Murano glass or if it was like a Swiss glass in any case I decided that it looked high quality enough for me to take a chance and I was confident that I could take out that candle wax pretty easily given um, its shape and what it was made of and so yeah we decided to take a risk and look it up later try to follow my gut most of the time and you know it usually takes me in the right direction well then we saw this basket and I was like now here's a basket because it's got the gorgeous coil it looks like it was you know made by a Native American because of the high quality I love the orange and brown the flower in the middle is just stunning and so I was definitely sold on that one. That one was, was going to go in the cart for sure. <laughs> Would make like a great fruit basket or catch all or goodness, you could use it for so many things. I think we have had a turn of luck. I still like to look through all of the uh, thermoses because every once in a while you might find one that's, you know, older and more unusual, interesting. And I do still check out the, the, pot, the pots and pans. Um, this one was really curious to me. Uh, I was so bummed out that I couldn't figure out what it said on the bottom. I just couldn't make it out. It was just too worn off and also I couldn't get the lid off like I would have had to have peeled off all that tape and man it was on there strong so I just thought okay the universe is saying that given the outside of this piece it's probably not worth fighting with right now <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so we moved on And then I thought, okay, well, now I have to look through all the pots and pans to see if there are any others that look look as interesting as that one. But there weren't. <laughs> but we did do one more scan of the thermos area just to make sure. And this is actually probably another one of my favorite areas of Goodwill. I love all the wood stuff. Just like the earthy warm wood colors the dark woods the light woods and then I found this trunk and you know I'm actually kind of regretting that I didn't end up getting it 
The reason being, I could not figure out how to open it. Uh, now, I do have someone in my life who knows how to pick locks, so I probably should have, you know, brought it to him to see if he could do it. But I just thought, you know, if it doesn't come with a key, then I don't think I'd feel good about selling it. But it was so darling. I loved the decals, even though they were peeling off. You could just tell it had some age. It had been it had been around for some time. And it was in pretty good condition, considering. And it felt like it was made of leather, potentially, the outside. So. And then I saw this wooden vase. And it looked like it had been hand carved. And to me, it looked like likely it had been made in India. And I just, I really liked it. I liked the fl fl flowers. Um, and so, and when I pulled the sticker, I saw that it did say India at the bottom. So it went in the basket. I just thought, you know, it just needs a little bit of wood oil and it would shine right up and look gorgeous. Looks like probably a vase of some kind. Then I saw this little pig. I was born in the year of the pig or the boar. And uh, some, I, I think, I like pigs. I think they're really smart, sweet animals. And so I thought it was adorable. Not sure if it was like a pig fruit bowl or <laughs> what exactly its purpose was, but it did have a modern sticker and I didn't see anything to indicate it was hand carved. So I said, bye piggy piggy. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. It was a little dangerous, like trying to look underneath some of the stuff because it was just so layered and then I found this I thought it was really like had really vibrant colors and it I couldn't tell if it was Mayan Aztec um, but I also felt like it probably was a tourist piece of some kind because I didn't see an artist's signature or anything to indicate otherwise had to check out this box. I have a thing for boxes. I just, I love them. I love that you don't know what's inside of them <laughs> and they serve such a good purpose. You could, you could put anything in them. And then I found this mask. Man, was it detailed. But again, I, I felt like it was probably more of a modern piece and not so much like a something that was handmade um, and so we left it I was looking at this and it said something about red wood um, on the bottom if I'm remembering right and I really liked it but then I noticed there was like some chipping and I was pretty confused by that because it it almost looked like chip with like paint chipping but then somehow it was supposed to be solid wood it was also very light and so, yeah, that just kind of worried me a little bit. So I left it there. And then we decided to start checking out some of the vases. I wanted to look at the bottom of this one. It was very heavy, so I thought, well, maybe it's good quality. But it did have the Made in China sticker on the bottom. So, plus it was really large. I tend to pick up a lot of stuff and then I don't take home as much. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I have to like hold it in my hand to get a better read on whether I feel like it might have value or not. Sometimes when, you know, you can feel how much something weighs, it can give you an indication like that. This vase here was definitely made of crystal, but it looked like modern crystal to me and it was, but it was really heavy. I felt like it would match those decanters that we saw earlier. Like maybe it's the same maker or something. 
but I'm not as interested in modern pieces. Every once in a while they get me if it's really unique, but I was excited because I really loved the black with the gold, but I believe there was some sort of um, Chinese maker on the bottom. And when I saw the front, I thought it was really pretty, but I was hoping for something a little cleaner. So I went ahead and left that there. Then I saw this like cranberry colored vase. I think it said Hooser or Hoiser glass on the bottom. Which, again, just from looking at it, it appeared to be more modern to me, just the look and feel of it. It didn't have as many, like, designs in, it, in the glass, so I didn't want to risk it. I, I thought the yellow of this was really pretty. It looked like a canary yellow but there was really no other information to guide me on that one, and it was very heavy. Lots of vases over here. <laughs> and this one tricked me, because I was like, oh, is this one of the ones that glows? And it was plastic. I'm like, how dare you? How dare you do this to me? You're just mean. Just mean. <laughs> but now I learned that they can come in plastic. Who knew? I wonder if it still glows. <laughs> oh, geez. I was investigating some of those vases, checking out the bottoms to see if they were smooth and clear or if they were bumpy. <clears throat> Lots of planters here, kind of like the garden section. I was just looking through the wood section again just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Then I saw this globe and I thought it was really cool. It looked very 80s, maybe 90s to me. Um, but it was really big and I just wasn't sure about shipping. I probably should have just gotten it for my daughter because she wants a globe, but she's, she's specifically asking for a light up globe. So <laughs> I don't think this would have made the cut for her and it didn't look mid-century to me, which is kind of more the globes that I'm drawn to. So I was like, well, you're really cool, but I think you need to find another home, buddy. And then there was another globe. <laughs> and I saw this and I just wasn't really sure what it was. I really liked the dark wood with the bright, what I thought was brass. But now I'm not really sure if it is brass. It, it does look like some sort of gold colored metal, but it was so super shiny that I just wasn't convinced that it was that all of the pieces on there were necessarily brass and I couldn't tell what it was. So had to uh, leave it there. And I always make it a point to check out some of the artwork. Most of the time I don't pick any up, but every once in a while I'll see some embroidery pieces that are retro or vintage and I grab those or like I've seen a gold I've picked up a gold foil artwork before and so I'm always curious but I'm very very picky about what I grab and I thought this was cool that it was it looked like out of a textbook and it looked like someone had it professionally framed at Michael's but you know um, I wasn't I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. This is actually a Goodwill where I have found some very, rather large um, 
embroidery pieces and so I always make sure to look thoroughly <laughs> which is why I'm pulling all of these frames up just to see See if any of them are hiding anywhere. Where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> but it wasn't in the cards for today. No embroidery for us. That's okay. We found some other cool stuff. And now we can look through some of these bags. See if maybe there's a salt and pepper shaker or some barware. I thought these were adorable. They were, I love Lucy. Unfortunately, as you can guess, they're definitely more modern. I'm guessing it's something that was probably sold in like Hot Topic or someplace like that. And so because of that, I, I thought, okay, gotta leave them here. And then I saw these little chickens and I thought they were so cute. I was like, Burger. but they did look modern so I moved on rather quickly and I saw these guys and I really love the sunflower design on them but I didn't see a made in Japan sticker or anything and so I just wasn't sure if they were like made to look vintage and weren't uh, plus they needed a fair amount of cleaning they had some stains and some of the stains I weren't sure would come off so I decided to pass even though the sunflowers make me so happy. But they'll make someone else happy. It's okay. It's okay. And I saw some figurines in here and I thought, hmm, I wonder if any of these have some age to them. But they just weren't compelling enough for me to really investigate further. I had to take a peek over here to see if there were any unique lamps. But at first glance, wasn't really seeing anything speaking to me. Then I saw this and I just thought it was really interesting. Looked like a lamp of some sort. And I couldn't quite make out what it was saying on the tag. I was also trying to figure out if there was maybe a lampshade somewhere that went with it, but I don't know. It had a lot of damage on the bottom. And so even though it looked really retro, I just felt like um, I wasn't sure about it. I had to look through some of these tops to see if maybe there was a fairy lamp in there somewhere, but no, not today. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's going to do it for us today. We've got one, two, three, four, five little items, and that is good luck in my opinion, so I'm pretty happy that we came by. Yay! All right, guys, that was fun. We did find some good items. Uh, we spent a little over 20 bucks, which is not too shabby. And uh, my favorite piece was the Japanese teapot, especially because that one lady approached us and told us that she had bought that same teapot as a wedding gift 20 years ago. And I love stuff like that. I love knowing the history of things and the memories that people keep and finding th treasures that others would throw away and finding them a home to be loved again because, you know, sometimes things that are valuable are tossed away. And uh, yeah, so hopefully I am helping the world <laughs> in that sense. And, um, and I hope you had fun. So this is BF Vintage and we'll see you next time.